Regular expressions are commonly used in computer technology to find or extract certain patterns in text strings. Regular expressions can be a very complex uh, topic, but it is also a very powerful one. This video is not a tutorial on regular expressions, but it shows a couple of very useful examples in Switch, so you can make use of their power without having to be an expert. In Switch Help, under Introduction, Advanced Topics for Designing Flows, you can find a technical introduction to this topic. And you can, of course, find many references on the Internet. There are five places in Switch where regular expressions can be used. On a connection to route a job, in the search field of a text variable in the Variables pane, and this pane is available in many locations throughout Switch, in the right-hand part of a condition when using the matches or does not match operators, in certain text fields of certain elements as here in the rename element, and in the data format field of text and number metadata fields in a submit point or a checkpoint. As a first example, let us take the case where you want to check if an incoming file starts with a valid job number or not valid job number being defined as the character B followed by six digits of which the first one is 405. As a condition on the first connection we define a regular expression as the character B followed by 4 or 5 followed by the digits 0 to 9 five times followed by a dot which stands for any character and an asterisk which stands for any number of times. We didn't add the dot asterisk, the regular expression would only match file names that are exactly made up of B plus six digits. And when we process the file, we see that each file has followed the correct route. For the second example, we have the situation that the customer is sending mails with a job number in the subject line but the way in which the subject line is built up is not consistent. The only thing that is certain is that the job number with the same definition as in the first example is present somewhere in the subject line and we would like to rename the attached file by adding that job number as a prefix. In the rename element we choose to add a prefix as the first action. We use a single line text with variables for that and we choose the email subject variable because that is where the number is and we want to extract from the email subject the B four or five and five digits we insert the variable and add an underscore this time we do not add the dot asterisk because we only want to extract the valid job number nothing else and as you can see the downloaded files have been correctly renamed for the third example, we take the case of a piece of XMP metadata with the name of the regional edition of the publication, and we want to check if that name corresponds to either capital, north, or west. We begin by building a location path to the metadata that we want to check for. Metadata text build location path. It's embedded in the XMP click on OK, insert it, and we have our sample value. We could check if it's equal to north and then do another check to see if it's equal to uh, capital and so on, or we could choose the matches operator and simply fill in the different possibilities divided by the pipe symbol, which stands for OR in regular expressions. The method with the regular expression is somewhat more convenient to define and it is also more efficient as switch only has to evaluate the metadata location path once and not three times. For the fourth example, we have a file name that ends in a page number and we want to make sure that it is three digits long. In the rename job element, we're going to define two search and replace actions on the file name proper. First, we will search for the regular expression underscore in a digit 
followed by the dollar sign to indicate that we're only interested in finding this combination at the end of the string. And we're going to replace that by the last digit out of the job name proper. And of course, we're going to put an underscore P and two zeros in front of that. And we only do that once. In the second action, we do basically the same thing, except that now we're going to be looking for two digits and we're only going to insert one additional zero. And as you can see, our file ending in underscore 17 got properly renamed. When asking a user to enter a value, it's usually a good idea to check the input. For example, in the digital print environment, you may want the user to specify the value for the number of copies to be printed as being between, say, 10 copies and 2,000 copies. Or when the user has to specify a mail address, you may want to check that what the user entered is at least a valid email address. In the case of the printed copies between 10 and 2,000, the regular expression we enter in the data format field is built up like this. We allow the number 1 to be followed by the digits 0 through to 9, minimally once, and maximum three times. This accounts for the numbers 10 through to 19, 100 through to 199, and 1000 through to 1999. Then we also allow the number to start with 2, followed by 0 through to 9, minimally once, but maximum only two times, which will cover all the cases between 20 and 299. And then we, of course, also allow the number 2000 as it is. All the other numbers, starting with 3 through to 9, can be followed by 0 through to 9, minimally once, maximum twice, and this will account for all the numbers between 30 and 99 and 300 and 999. I find that writing the different parts of the regular expression on separate lines makes it a bit clearer, but to make it valid, we have to put everything on one single line separated by the pipe symbol, which, as you may recall, is the OR in regular expressions. You will probably realize by now that checking the validity of a mail address can become quite complex. Fortunately, there are lots of resources on the internet with tutorials and samples of regular expressions. Here is one that validates mail addresses I picked from the internet. I simply paste it in the data format field of a text metadata field, and that's it. When submitting file to this submit point, the client will validate my input. So as you can see, I try to type something which is not valid, but this simply is not allowed. And also, as soon as I type in a valid email address, it is then that the OK button becomes active and the file can be submitted. There's a lot more to regular expressions than was presented here, but I hope that these examples are both useful and easy enough for you to modify to fit your particular requirements, even if you're not an expert in regular expressions. Have fun with it.